This past weekend, the Mrs. and I went on a short little weekend trip to a small provincial town in rural Russia called Suzdal. Now Suzdal is about 150 miles north northwest of Moscow. Wrong, you idiot. It's northeast of Moscow. And it's also one of the oldest towns in Russia. In fact, it's going to celebrate its 1000th anniversary in August. So, got a question for you. What does a 600 year old monastery and Nazi German prisoners of war have in common? You're gonna find out in three, two, one. So if you come to visit Moscow and you want to see the, as locals like to call it, real Russia. <laughs> you have to leave Moscow and go into the rural, more provincial side of Russia. You guys always complain that I never show rule. <laughs> Outside Moscow, okay, here you guys go. Kanakova, Tverskaya Oblast. Are you happy now? <laughs> Are you happy now? And there's no better place, no better town that I can recommend that's close to Moscow other than Suzdal. Now, Suzdal, the once glorious capital of Russia's oldest province, has over 60 churches. Don't quote me on that. I, I don't know. I don't know these things. They're a lot. They're everywhere. Everywhere you turn your head, you see a church. So Suzdal has been set aside by the Russian government, and they put limits on new construction to kind of keep that old, ancient, provincial vibe to Suzdal. It's, I think it's great. It's amazing. Now in the center you will find a square that on the weekends hosts a farmer's market with many local handmade goods and local artists that gather to sell their goods. It's really impressive. Now, one of the many things that I love about Suzdal is this. Suzdalskaya Medevucha. And this is Medevucha. <laughs> now, if you don't know what Medevucha is, it is a fermented drink uh, made from honey. So the root word, miod, meaning honey, is what makes medavuka. It's much like kvass, uh, where kvass is made from rye, and rye bread. Medavuka is made from honey. It comes in two flavors. It comes in uh, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. I prefer the non-alcoholic and it is one of my favorite summer drinks and it ranks right up there next to sweet Texas tea. Can't beat that on a hot summer day. And another cultural note about Suzdal is that there are over 60 motion pictures and films that have been produced in and around Suzdal, including uh, Peter the Great. It was filmed in uh, 1985, 1986 
here in Suzdal starred many uh, famous Western uh, actors and uh, it was filmed right here in Suzdal. Now there are churches and monasteries all over Suzdal but one of the largest and most impressive is Spasa Yefimiev Monastery. Originally called the Spassky and located high over the Kamienka River, Spasa Yefimiev served as a fortress to protect the town from any attackers. It was founded in the year 1352 by the monk Yefimi from Nizhny Novgorod on the order of Prince Boris Konstantinovich of Suzdal Nizhny Novgorod. Upon monk Yefimi's death in 1404, the monastery was renamed after him into the Spasa Yefimiev Monastery. Within the walls of the fortification are several churches, monks' quarters, a hospital, a prison castle, and an apothecary garden. The prison block was established on order of Catherine the Great in 1766, which predates the founding of the U.S. by 10 years. Enjoy these sights and sounds from Spasa Yefimiev. Now, during the Great Patriotic War, this prison was known as Suzdal Camp 160. And in January of 1943, it received as prisoners of war German officers and generals captured at the Battle of Stalingrad, which is now known as St. Petersburg. Now, most officers and generals were from the 6th Army, led by Field Marshal Frederick Paulus. Now, in 1942, Paulus was given command of the 6th Army despite his lack of field experience. That's probably why he got caught. Paulus surrendered in Stalingrad on 31 January 1943. The same day, ironically, <laughs> he received notification from Germany that uh, Hitler had promoted him to field marshal. How's that for karma? Now, Hitler hearing that Paulus and the 6th Army had been captured, fully expected Paulus to take his own life. Hitler repeated to his staff that there was no precedent of a German field marshal being captured alive. Well, <laughs> until now. So while in Soviet captivity during the war, Paulus became a vocal critic of the Nazi regime and joined the Soviet-sponsored National Committee for a Free Germany. In 1953, Paulus moved to East Germany where he worked in military history research and he lived out the rest of his life in Dresden. It's amazing that this place was actually a prison at one time because it's, it's so beautiful. And the stark contrast is just incredible because here you have the outer wall of the prison and just outside the walls is this magnificent building. So I, I find it fascinating that 
in the midst of all of these beautiful churches and monasteries and Suzdal being one of the most spiritual places uh, in all of Russia. Of course, this is my opinion. But I find it fascinating that there would be a prison for war prisoners here. And I have a question for you guys. Do you feel that there was some sort of spiritual, maybe on a multi-dimensional level, some sort of transformation for these prisoners of war? Being in such a spiritual place, I mean, how can you not have some sort of personal spiritual transformation? What, what do you think? Tell me, write down in the comments what you think. And before we go much further, let me know, have you been to Suzdal? And if you have, what, what is your opinion of Suzdal? And if you haven't been to Suzdal yet, if you haven't yet been to Russia, if you haven't been to Moscow, is Suzdal a scary place? <laughs> Would you come visit Suzdal? Yeah. Now, also located at Spasa Yefimiev Monastery is the grave of Dmitry Bajarsky. If you've watched my video inside St. Basil's Cathedral, you may be familiar with this. And this is Dmitry Bajarsky. So the grave of Dmitry Pozharsky is located at Spasa Efimiev Monastery in Suzdal. So we're being kicked out? We're being kicked out, so I'll have to finish my story about Dmitry Pozharsky somewhere else. Uh, security is um, escorting, escorting everybody out because something's going on. So everyone has been cleared out from Red Square, this little center spot right here across from the bell tower. And uh, there are a bunch of military personnel in their Class A uniforms. So it's either a military parade or uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I wonder what's going on. Seems like crowds are thinning out. I don't see anybody kicking uh, folks out necessarily from all of Red Square, but it seems to be thinning out. So we'll just follow the crowd. Looks like whatever was happening here is finished, and now we can go back to here. So Dmitry Pozharsky was granted the unprecedented title of Savior of the Fatherland by none other than Mikhail the First, I think. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Let me see. Mikhail the first. So the, the remains of Dmitri are interred at Spasa Yefimiev Monastery in Suzdal. However, 
the uh, Bolsheviks destroyed his grave and uh, it was only uh, more recent time that um, a marker was put in place to honor uh, his grave. But here at Red Square, you can see that there is a monument dedicated to his memory and his legacy. And uh, it's kind of neat that there is some connection between Moscow and Suzdol, and not only Suzdol, but the monastery at Spasa Efendia. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think about it. Write down in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. And from sunny, bright, beautiful, oh, by the way, this is the first day of summer. This is the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. And in fact, the sun came up about 3.45 this morning. <laughs> yeah, it came up pretty early. Anyway, from sunny, beautiful, majestic, red square in Moscow, Russia. Пока. Real Russia. Real Russia. Constant. Constant. Susto, the once glorious capital. Constant. Cons capital. Konstantin. Konstantinovich. 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 The once glorious capital. Capital. Boris Konstantinovich. Konstantinovich. I think that's how you pronounce it. Don't quote me on that. I, I don't. I don't know these things.